Can everyone see my presentation? Yes. We see it. And I do want to mention, uh, we're recording this presentation so you know. Um, I guess everyone's screens or videos are mostly off. Toward the end, after the presentation, feel free to turn on your video and, and chat with Seb, but I want to let you know that we are going to record this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jean, again, for uh, uh, the ability for me to uh, present all of you with uh, understanding color, and um, we'll get started now. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, so, color essentially we we perceive color uh, through light. Um, light reflects color. Um, the color is a function of how our eyes and brains perceive light. Um, and we obviously see visible the visible spectrum um, bands of color that we do see uh, is when light is refracted. Um, we see color because of uh, the way in which our brain and eyes perceive light through waves, different wavelengths. Um, so each color that we do see has either a greater or shorter uh, wave, wave span. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, but we'll, uh, for this presentation, we'll focus mainly on um, subtractive color, but there's also additive color. You can use that in light specifically. Um, but nonetheless, um, intangible objects, we see uh, pigments a lot of the time. Um, so when light hits an object, uh, you know, we see green or that's reflected. And then what is absorbed is the other colors. Okay? Um, and then here's a diagram, a little illustration. So when you see a green leaf here, like I said, a green is uh, refracted and then everything else, all the other color in the spectrum is um, absorbed. And so here below is uh, a refraction and dispersion of white light. Basically it's just a simple diagram where light refra refra refracts um, through a prism. You're probably very familiar with, with so this um, sort of illustration. And then you'll see the dispersion of um, light through the refraction of different colors. Um, so, so, great. Um, so move on. So this is a, the visible spectrum here. Um, so I mentioned before, shorter wavelengths, you see violet, um, indigo, and then a longer wavelength, we see red and um, red, orange, et cetera, okay? And then here above, um, we see the visible. So basically, the visible light is uh, underneath the visible spectrum. Okay. Um, great. okay. Um, so we have subtractive and additive color, additive color systems. Um, and basic, basically, um, we have, through that, we have, um, in the subtractive system, we have primary colors. Uh, I'm sure you're probably very familiar with the primary colors. Um, yellow, uh, blue, and red. And then we have secondary colors by mixing. I, mi I must preface this by saying that primary colors cannot be, I cannot, you cannot mix those primary colors, of course. Um, so they're, they're, they're primary colors. And then secondary colors are mixed through two primary colors. Um, great. And then, so here is the color wheel. Um, usually we uh, organize it so that yellow is on, on the very top. Um, because it is the lightest technically value. Um, and then the primary colors are right here, yellow, red, and blue, and then secondary colors, green, orange, and violet. Oh, sorry, let's go back. And then um, tertiary colors will be yellow, green, um, yellow, orange, red, orange, blue, green, blue, violet, and then the red, violet, okay? And essentially, you just make the primary and a secondary to uh, get a red violet, for example. Okay, And just remember that there's many different colors. And these are all the five hues. But there's many different colors that we can uh, sort of create through the mix of these different types of colors together. OK? Um, so like I said, uh, color theorists kind of arrange the visible spectrum in a circle. Um, right, the tertiary colors, and then the properties of color are hue, value, and intensity. Um, so just to be clear, color and hue are not, don't mean the same thing. 
um, you just um, basically there are multiple multitude of colors, but just uh, 12 hues. Uh, so the 12 hues are the, you'll see them in the uh, color wheel that I just showed you a couple seconds ago. Um, these are just basically in the pure states of color in the color wheel. Um, we also understand a color as having value, basically light or dark. And in order to um, have a light hue, you just mix it with white and uh, that is called tint. And then when you add black to a hue, you, that is a shade. And so based in, in, to achieve the highest intensity, you just either, which is also known as saturation, you, you, technically it's uh, yellow would be like a very saturated color, but essentially all the 12 hues in, on the color wheel are all to the greatest intensity. Um, so with that said, um, so here are some examples, for example, of red. Um, red, so there's different types of, if you can sort of notice here uh, in the first row, um, we have the hue, red, which is in its pure color. Um, and remember that between, there's different uh, hues of red. Um, here on the left, you kind of see that it, it seems a little bit like more violet-y, more, there's more violet to it. Um, I hope you can notice the difference. And then on the right here, it's a little bit more warm. And um, warm usually refers to like, just like the warm colors. There's warm colors and cool colors. Um, but you can, I'm sure you can notice the difference between uh, this here, this rectangle, and then the one right here. You'll notice that this is Colors warm. show up very well. Say that again, I'm sorry? The colors do show up really well on your presentation. Great. Yeah. Great. Good. Good. And great. So you know you can notice the different uh, um, hues. Yeah. Um, and then here, of course, is the tints. So these are just different degrees of the base color. When you add the white, you can see it at 100%, it's completely white. Um, and then here is just hue and gray. And um, same goes for the last row, hue plus black. So it will be shades, great. And then here you could also um, subdue a color to its complement. So in this case, for example, we'll take the first row the complement of red is green. And as you can tell here, it's uh, neutralized and it lowers its saturation. So as you can probably see, for example, here, blue is the most intense here in this um, in this row. And then orange is also um, all the way to the right. Um, so sometimes um, colors that have a high intensity are look um, brilliant and energetic. And then colors that have low intensity like I said, are look soft and sub and are subdued. Um, okay. And then here, um, we have a an example I sort of took, um, as a way to kind of uh depict what I what local color means. Um, it's just basically when objects are under a regular light. In other words, I was able to kind of extract some of the from the pair here, as you can tell here from above. Okay, so that's what we, we uh, refer to as local colors. It's just when objects fall under regular daylight. Okay, and then we have the monochromatic color schemes, which basically is what I showed you earlier with the reds and the hues, but I have another example. Um, great. And then I'll just show you the complementary color schemes and the, oh, and then the simultaneous contrast is just basically when we throw that complements right like against each other. Like in this example here with um, the blue and orange and, oh, let's go back, sorry about that. And you can uh, see that I reversed it here and same thing goes for each one here on the right. Um, so analogous colors are just basically essentially four colors that are next to each other. So here I have three only, but there's technically we of um, consider just four that are next to in the color wheel. Um, so for example, yellow, yellow, green, green. Great, okay. And then here we have the warm and then the cool colors. And then we have our triadic colors, which um, three hues that are equidistant from one another on the color wheel, such as the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. But there's also a secondary um, 
for schemes. So here's the saturation and value. Great, and then this is our worksheet that we'll be working on today. Um, so you have the primary colors, and then we have the secondary colors. So I only have three colors here with me, but um, remember that there's different um, types of one color. But I'll go in more in depth, but let's just review it here. Let's take it uh, to the worksheet for you. So this is what you call color schemes. And then um, you have the intermediate colors here. Basically, um, by mixing the primary and secondary color, we can achieve these uh, intermediate colors, which is the name is sort of explains itself. And then the uh, and then the tertiary color, colors, I'm sorry, yeah, are basically the same thing. And then you can sort of see the analogous colors here on the color wheel to reference here. Right next to each other are just adjacent colors. And then triadic colors are um, equal distant from each other here. As you can tell from the small little dots we have. And then the split complements are basically um, you have, for example, the yellow here. And then the split complements, as you can probably tell here, is right across from it. And we have here our red violet and blue violet. Um, and then here, the color intensity, we have the pure color and then the complement of the, of the pure color. And then here is, um, we just take one color, for example, I hear they use the blue, and then we just added some white and then some black, and we mixed gray together, and then we just added the complement. Um, Then we also have um, the, characteris the characteristic of color, um, emotion and cultural effects, the illusion of three-dimensional space and the tendency to uh, blend, I'm sorry, blend at a distance. Um, so we'll get into the emotion and culture part. So everyone's gonna, uh, under gonna have perceived color um, through in a different way. Um, but culturally we do have, we assign our colors a specific sort of emotion. Um, but nonetheless, um, studies have shown that certain colors like pinks and blues relax us while others, red and oranges, make us anxious. Um, great. And, oh, and then cultural backgrounds have taught us to associate certain colors with specific experiences and feelings. And here's a, a chart I found um, online that um, assigns color to how we sort of already intuitively understand it. So white is usually associated with purity, um, this is just the other side of uh, color that is used by artists um, to express certain, certain feelings or moods. But green is sometimes associated to the environment or money. Uh, blue is also sometimes associated to um, uh, affection and red to passion and et cetera and so on. So, um, and black to mystery and power and purple to um, uh, royalty and luxury, okay? um, and yellow to cheerfulness and uh, friendliness and energy. So however you use color, um, it's it's just really kind of um, up to you what kind of mood you want to sort of create or whether you want to uh, add um, meaning that sort of uh, conveys the, an idea that you're sort of trying to agree with your work. Okay, and then the illusion of three-dimensional space. Here we have Hans Hoffman's uh, work, The Gate, um, whose work is in the uh, the Nova State University um, with the color. I don't know if anybody has been able to go to see the exhibition and then see you, the color field painting, but I recommend you do go and check it out. Um, it has really, really nice paintings. And you can see one of Hans Hoffman's um, paintings. If, yeah. if you're familiar with Hoffman, um, he developed this uh, idea of like push and pull, which we can see here. Basically, he's using the primary colors and then um, secondary colors to convey space and carve out uh, depth. Uh, but we also see a tendency to blend uh, colors at a distance. Um, I'm not sure if I have an example here of Seurat's. Um, his one of his I I can't remember the his name right now. Um, but I'm not sure if I included it here, but nonetheless, um, you'll probably it's 
included in the pointillism, the movie pointillism. But here are some type of brushes that you can use. I included this. It's just kind of as a way since we are, I'm going to use paint. I I thought it would be um, good to you know, show you more about the types of brushes that you could use to um, to apply the color, the pigments on your pieces of paper. Um, so for today, I'll probably be I'll be using a round um, brush. So. This one is a synthetic brush. I don't know if you can see it, but I have it right here. But um, I use different types of skills, but nonetheless. This one is, yeah, Fundamentals Creative Mind. Okay, great. So um, I think it will help to have the color wheel. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to the color wheel. So um, you can definitely get started with the color wheel. And Maybe um, I have an example here that I made. I don't know if everyone can see it a long time ago um, when it was a little younger. Um, you could do it this way, um, but you could also do it in the color wheel too. Um, any way that works for you is a good way to approach it. Um, remember, I think one of the most challenging things about color is just remembering the relationship of color that they have to each other. But I'm I'm really big on experimentation, so. I think we'll just start out with that. So we can start out with the color wheel. Can everyone see the color wheel here that I have? Yeah. Or do we have any I questions? Said... Great. Oh. Do we have any questions so far? Oh, let's see. Yeah. Somebody says, could you show the prior slide with the value examples? Uh, yes. Yes. And if anybody has any question, anybody, I'm, I like interaction. So if anybody has any questions, you want to unmute yourself and ask questions, I really love to engage with um, with folks and that's sort of how I guide my uh, in teaching when, I do, when I'm teaching the, these kinds of things. I, uh, I so really- So you guys wanna turn, you could probably turn on your mics or, so in uh, Karen, or Janet rather adds that in Japan, the color associated with death is white. In the US, it's black. Yeah, yeah, that's really and interesting, yeah. I heard that as well. I'm not sure where, but that's really interesting. So it might, yeah, differ according to how, yeah, your background and where you grew up. And, um, but I mean, essentially colors can mean any, any personality can be rather subjective. It doesn't have to mean, I mean, of course, culturally, everybody understands it as so, but the beauty, beautiful thing about artists is that they're able to sort of shape color in a specific yeah. way through their work. So I really enjoy it. I, th I think I was inquiring about a slide or two after this one. So this one? Okay. Is it this one? Was it, Yes. Well, no. I'm sorry. Um, Let's see. Keep going. Did I miss it? This one. That one. Thank you. Okay. I just... I, I've ha had some discussions with people lately about value versus chroma. And I didn't know if maybe this had chroma on there. Um, the, the story about the Japanese color is when the U.S. started sending appliances to Japan, they were white and they did not sell. And after they changed the color to cream color, they sold because that association is so strong. So it can make a big difference for cultural differences. Wow, yeah. That's so interesting. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Well, um, any more questions or anything else that, um, you, know, that you might want to add? That's a really good point. That's a really good, yeah, good point. Um, yeah, do we have any more questions in the chat or maybe before can we start? Ask, sorry, can I ask a question? Sorry, go ahead. Yes, Michelle. Um, so I've never seen this chart before, the saturation versus value, and I'm interested in why it's not a full grid. Oh yeah. Um well that's a that's a really good question. Um well I think here it's just showing you the intensity of the red hue here, here, um, as opposed mm -hmm. to 
value. So I think that's perhaps why. Um, but I don't, I don't I don't particularly have an explanation for that to be quite honest with you. Um I just think I can I can comment, I think, because it starts at the top right, uh, the top left corner is white. And you run down that whole left, the values go from white to the very darkest dark. And this is just an example of red. And so the saturation of red from the top, it's white. And then as you begin to add different values of red, you get to the reddest red. And so it's sort of like a triangle because at the very top, the deepest red, the truest red is at the top right corner. And then of course it gets darker and darker as you go down closer and closer to black until finally it's just black. So I think that's kind of why it's not like a full grid. It's it's just a gradation scale. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Awesome. Um, anyone else that might have anything? We're all learning, so this is great. Please ask questions. Um, yeah. Anything else? Anyone? No, if if we don't have any more questions, I mean, I'm sure you'll think of something later. So please, please be. Yeah, so okay. Um, so my colors are right here. Um, I think I left my palette. I'm gonna go grab my palette. I think I left. Okay. Great. Um, so we can get started and then. I'll just start. Well, the colors that I'm using today are cadmium yellow lemon. Um, I sometimes use, I don't know if I to see it. Well, is I'll point out, you can see, it says my name, but you can see, um, you can also see the Seb there. And then uh, you can, maybe I can change this to say desk view or something, but yeah, desk. I'll call it desk, Seb's desk. How's that? So you can, you kind of get a, a bird's eye view of what's happening on his desk as well. You can see that there as well. Hopefully. <laughs> um, and then we all have quinacridone red. I'm um, sorry for the insertion, but um, we have phthalo blue. Um, so we use those as my primary colors. Um, of course, if we're using oil, maybe you're just painting on canvas, you can um, use alizarin and crimson and um, cadmium Excuse yellow light. Me. I'm sorry to interrupt, but am, I think I'm doing something wrong. I, I can't see your your desktop. I can only see a big picture of the saturation and the value. Am I doing something wrong so that I don't look at your... You can slide the right-hand side. A little handle will come up. And you can slide it to the middle and see all three. Oh, okay. Thank you. But there's no way to pin that and make it larger, huh? Okay. Um, yeah. If you because then it just becomes really pixelated. Oh, just slide it as far left as you can. Okay. I thought I could pin it or something like yeah. that, but I guess not. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for to interrupt. I know it's perfect. Thanks for asking. Let's see if I pin. What do I pin? How's that? Does that work? You guys can looks, see it. Looks the same to me, but. I, I I'm using side-by-side side You have to gallery. individually pin. You have to individually pin. To get, once you get it slid all the way over, if you pin ah, that yeah. desk, then it will go the to the three floor. dots. There you go. Yeah. You, or you right click, you right click. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. But while we're doing that, can you put the color wheel back over to them? <laughs> Because I forget what's in there. Everything is so helpful. Yeah, the color wheel. Um, so, um, here we go. You can. Can you see the color wheel? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's get started. Um. Yeah. Like I was saying, you. You can you you can basically make any. I'm sure you probably know this, but you can make any color with just using the primary color. Um, and white if you're making flesh, like flesh tones, um, or I, I mean, guys, when I yeah, when I was painting the figure um, in school, I I relied on just the the primary colors in white. Um, so my I would start out with the 
mixing um, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. These were oil paints. And that's how I achieved the darkest value. It was a really dark value here. Uh, this value, this violet, I'm sorry, um, is rather um, bright. Um, but if you, if you know, when I was mixing them with oil, it was rather dark. I think it was on the color scheme. Actually, no, I'm sorry, no. Um, but but so so when I was painting, that's how I that would be my darkest value technically, and then I would mix um the first I would start out mixing so I would create a violet I would do those two um colors and then I would add the yellow and then depending on the the type of flesh I would I would want to paint or make I would add more yellow or less yellow and that would make ground that would make make things a little bit more more muted and, and brownish um there's different ways you can make brown um through the um, to me, so in a way or um like how was how i was making it so i would add a little bit more uh, cadmium yellow and then that would and then a little bit of white and then i would just kind of work uh, through around that to achieve whatever uh color of the flesh I wanted to get on my painting, but um, that's just one one way to do it. There's many ways to. Nowadays, you can just buy pre-mixed sort of colors. Um, that also works too. That kind of saves a lot of time, as well. As a matter of fact, um, so I, I I the reason why I wanted to just use primary colors during that time was because I really wanted to understand the relationships that that color um that uh, each color had to each other. So I think that's a good way to kind of, to, you know, you want to limit yourself so you can really understand the relationships between uh, color relationships and things of that nature. But um, yeah, it's good to you, so. Can I ask another question? Yeah. So most people think of primary colors as yellow, red, blue, right? That's what we're taught in primary school. But you you've defined primary as anything that's equidistant on the circle so you could start with violet and go to orange and green as primaries no those are triadic those are triadic they're just basically like form a triangle so that would be a second right. yeah. so why are, why are so you're saying that only yellow red and blue are primary yeah in the subtractive color like in the pigment color in subtractive color and what are they in additive Oh, that would be, I think, um, I, I want to say, I don't really, really know exactly, but I think it's uh, yellow, cyan, and magenta, if I'm right. Yes, uh, okay, that makes sense, because those are my printer colors. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, there's a, your printer colors would be, like, the that would be the monitor. So when you're looking at the, I mean, the screen, when you're looking at the screen, those are the colors that you would see, but then when you're printing things, if you can see, your inks would be in. Oh, no, the inks on inkjet are are cyan, magenta, and um, and yellow and yellow. Okay, so that would be um, so that would be something different. So maybe I I see I don't re I don't re remember exactly what because they they're uh suddenly different they're very different than um I think it would be I don't remember. I think it's then it's green, red, and I don't remember the third one. Violet. They're different because. When you're looking at, for example, like we're looking at the screen here, um, they're different than um, than when you, if you were to print it on your, uh, with your inks on your printer, those will be, uh, well, CMYK. So it will be cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, and then um, I don't know what the- Black. Black, okay, yeah, I don't remember. I, I that was more, that's like more graphic design, a sort of, um, knowledge um and also too like in theater they use a lot of additive colors to because all the colors make white so um that's something i'm more i'm more interested in um in like uh subtractive colors because my concentrations in painting so I, I usually know more about that than like the other uh, um, the other system the other color system the additive color system thank so, you Okay, um, but I think there is amazing um, other uh, information out there that we can also to sort of rely on too um, when it comes to that particular sort of um, system, but okay. Um,
So we'll start out with the yellow. This one's lemon, so the lemon, so it might might look a little bit uh green, but just for you to keep in mind when you do see that, but yeah, that's okay. Um because we're gonna mix mix them um to uh all accordingly. So um we'll take a yellow. I hope everyone can see my screen well. Can everyone see my my the color chart, the color wheel here that I have? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, the the one uh the paper, the one that I'm working on, the one that I'm painting on. It's not that. I mean. Yes. Yes, I can see fine. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So, quick question. So, um, you're starting with the yellow. Did you say it was a lemon yellow? Yes. Yes. It's a cadmium yellow lemon. So, does that mean that's a cool, a cool yellow, and that this becomes like a cool color chart? Um, well, for, for me, yes. Yes, for me specifically, yes, because I'm using lemon, but this this color here is um, kind of close to the yellow. I mean, you can, it's kind of slightly a little bit greenish and cool, like you said. And, and so you can um, sort of use, they, they have different types of yellows. They have different like cadmium yellow hue, cadmium yellow light. I mean, it, it's just um, different types of colors. So is it best if you're if you're starting, let's say, with a cool yellow when you do your color chart? I, I mean, I don't even know if this exists, but to, mm -hmm. to continue with a cool red and a cool blue and then so that everything stays cool? Is, is that the correct way to do it? Oh, uh, yeah, you, you can do that. That works fine. Um, I think as long as... Um, you, you have just the primary colors. I think that will be just fine. Oh, you also have to remember that color is re relative. So when you put color to next to another color, they might it might be optically different than what it would be if you like the simultaneous contrast. Um, let me show you. So if you if you pin uh, colors together like complementary colors, they they look different. Um, uh -huh. okay. I think it just depends. It just, it really depends. For example, like if you're um, it depends on the kind of feeling that you want to conjure with your work. If you like, for example, for the color wheel, I think you can make one cool color and then maybe warm color as well. Or um, yeah, let me go back. To color wheel, sorry. So yeah, so it's it's just um, like for example, you can't really. I mean this. This uh, cadmium yellow is very, like, you can barely notice how much green it has. But the fact that it says lemon, I think that's that's why I'm saying that there might be a little bit of green. If you were to compare it to cadmium yellow uh, light. Okay, thank you. And here, when I'm mixing it too, I don't know if you can see it on my palette. You can kind of see it when I add water, you can kind of see the green a little bit. I don't know if you can see it from the... Right. Yeah, I see that. I see that green. A little bit. But um, so now, so I I want to go ahead and do the, the um, the primary colors. First. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to phthalo blue. And I think that I believe um. No, this is a little confused, but okay. Let's just move on. Um, you can make different different uh color wheels too, and just see the interaction that color has. You know when you um, but you you essentially want to buy just like something that is just the purest color that you can get. Um, so. We have a blue here. Sometimes you might have to add a couple layers of the of the pigment, um, so you can really get an even coat. Um, so there's no um, overlapping um, pigment. But um, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you can definitely make one on canvas on the 
that's where like a stretch on the cardboard or something sturdy. Um, and yeah, you, you can definitely make it um, canvas as well. Um, so with oil paint, um, if you if you do want to work with oil paints, you can also make one with color, a watercolor. Um, so there's different ways to to, to make the a color wheel, um, and to see how color interacts physically with each other. I think it's a good uh experimenting with the different types of color before you actually um, you know, if you wanna maybe make a a painting um of flowers, for example, you you wanna know um how the color is going to um, appear before you you finish your work or you when you even start it. So so you can make uh, sketches of your using the colors. Um I, I heard someone sort of um choose the way that they go about choosing a color is they choose uh they, they say they kind of use the analogy of like a cast, like a cast from like a like a movie or something like that. So they want to have their main character. And so they choose uh depending on what they want to convey, whether it's like sadness or I don't know, it's or joy. So they would choose yellow and just kind of make sure that um yellow is a prominent uh, color in their work. And then from that, they they either choose an analogous color that is uh, going to create more harmony. So for example, um, if they want to create harmony, they would use, they can use um, yellow, yellow, green, or green, or they can use yellow, orange, yellow, orange, or red, orange to create more harmony. But if they want to create um, I conflict, they, the way you, they, they said that they use a complementary color like violet, right? So it just depends on what kind of mood you, you want to create in your work. Um, so it's just really up to you. Um, but but um, color also can, um, depending on your composition of the work that you're creating too, um, color can play a huge role in creating a uh, asymmetrical balance or a well composed image. Um, it just depends on like what how you're sort of painting or what you're painting too. Um, but for example, um, color can also be very arbitrary too. Um, especially considering um like color field painting. Um, that that I I mean from my understanding um. From what I understand is um, color just became a tool of expression, not so much as a tool to kind of like, for example, like in the Renaissance, um, people use specific colors to for the connotations they have, like violet for royalty and um, how how um, how difficult up here in the year was to sort of make that color. So it, so. Um, Color field painters um, used color in a way that um, sort of conveyed like the the inner the inner sort of uh, emotions and things of that nature. Uh, um, also, too, um, some artists you don't. Uh, I mean, they you do use color the despite the fact that they they uh, the way that they use it is. Uh, to how do I put this? Like it, like with Brock and Picasso, when they're using color, um, they are they are uh, re, uh, subduing the color to it so that it doesn't distract from the form. So you, if you see a lot of the time, uh, Brock and Picasso when they're getting to their uh, analytical cubist period, they, a lot of their works are uh, hard to tell what they what you're looking at. Although sometimes there's a focal point which is um, defined by um, the, the uh, fact that you can sort of identify that, for example, it's a bottle or it's a, it's a plate or et cetera. But they um, so do the color so that it doesn't come in conflict with, uh, with the form, with the uh, multiple perspectives that they're trying to represent in one picture plane.
So it just depends how, what, you know, the role of color that you give to your support. But, um, Okay, so I kind of finished the blue um, a little bit, so we'll, we'll move on to the to red. So this one is Queen Earthquidone Red. Um, which is here. It just also too depends, like the pigment depends on the filler, the amount of like pigment that they add, or sometimes they they don't add uh, a lot of pigment. So you'll see a lot of times it's a student grade or professional grade. Um, there's a, they add a lot of, from what I understand, a lot of pigment to the student grade, so that um, or I think it's the other way around. I'm not sure, but. This one's a little, this red is a little cool. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now, um, now that I sort of finished, or I'm gonna let that let the red dry. Maybe I'll go back to it again. Um, we can maybe move to whatever. Um, well, I guess I can work on the secondary colors. I think that would be gonna be my next step. So maybe uh, mix mix. Uh, um, I guess you can try to mix equal parts of the primary colors to get, for example, like orange. You mix yellow and red. So maybe you could try to get. So when when for example, like when you when you want to make flesh tones, that is really important that you, um, you mix the right amount of of, of um of paint equal parts. So it's, it's just um experimenting, but there's a lot of the trial and error, especially when it comes to flesh. You just if you add too much um, yellow, then it just it, 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 it just might um, not necessarily work. But so sometimes um, people kind of uh, mix it, you know, uh, through using a palette, uh, a palette knife, or um, I like using like putting it in a container. Like here, I'm working on a on a color palette, but um, I, I like using, um, like for, for when I was making like, um, depends how much you need as, as well, how much a paint you need. Um, if you're working on a real large scale painting, um, you probably would just get a plastic or some container, a glass container. I have this um, sweet orange marmalade uh, smokers that I sort of, recycled um but the reason why i don't use oil paint anymore is because it's, it's toxic for the environment um and to clean to using acrylic paint is is for me i feel like it's a little it's better than than um because i can it can i try and then i can feel it and then i can just like use it like for something else i've accumulated a bunch of um different um dried 
the acrylic paint. So you can use it in another work of art as well. But here's my orange. And the orange is low in intensity compared to yellow. So if you were to um, put these side by side, which was another worksheet I didn't really put it in here, but um, if you were to make a value scale and then try to match the value scale, like the lightest value to a color, to a hue, that would be yellow. Um, and moving on from there, you can kind of try to um, match the other values according to the to the colors. Um, I think I think violet is the, the darkest value, if I'm correct. Um, or it might be blue, one of those two. And I guess since we do have the orange, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe make yellow orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, add more yellow to my orange. Shoot, let me fill in the Um, all right, so let me go ahead and make and add a little bit more yellow to the orange I made um, and then that should yield the yellow orange. And then we'll go back. Remember, as you're mixing the colors together, you'll see that there's so many um, different colors that you can sort of achieve, like work out. Or, I mean, the, the spectrum is just um, filled with just different, different types of color. There's only, what, 12 hues, um, so this is a yellow orange, which is, uh, it seems like it's more, um, like, it seems like it's tinted. Like, it seems like I added white to it, but I really didn't. I just add, added a yellow to it. It's brighter. It's brighter than the orange. Also, um, um, so that, that's a good color. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. All right, so next I'm going to go ahead. Since I have orange, I'm going to add, I'm going to make mix the red orange next. So you can get a little bit of your the red and then mix it with the orange since you already have it out. If you're using acrylic, um, you want to, you want to make sure that you um, work the acrylic before it dries. However, I did have a peer of mine when I was going to, when I was going to Miami Dade College, actually. Um, I had a friend who, she worked with uh, acrylic paint. That was when I was working with her, she was working with acrylic paint. So um, she had this, uh, a spray bottle, spray bottle, and that's how she kept the, the acrylic paint. Um, I'm gonna add more red. But that's how she kept the acrylic paint wet, nice and dry, and not dry, um, wet and um, alive, I guess, in other words. So that's one way. I mean, I think the, the beauty about uh, making art is that, is that everybody has their own unique process and technique and um, approach to, to make, not only making art, but also, um, I think I added too much red. So let me go ahead and... I want to have a, a, a clear hue, like a clear uh, different hue than the red and the orange. I want to make sure that there's a clear difference between the... Let's see. 
too, but um, I don't know. Does anybody have any any way of maybe working with acrylic? That I know they now they have uh, so many. Like now, uh, golden acrylic has like different mediums that you can use to either speed the drying, or I mean, I mean, it's just the um, amount of uh of products now that are out there for acrylic paint. Acrylic paint uh, blows my mind a little bit um, because um, you essentially can use acrylic for different things, um, use it in different ways. Um, you you can even um, use it like acrylic. I mean, like oil. Oil is the reason why I like working with oil is because you can uh, apply multiple layers to one substrate, and um, that really really helps in conveying a three-dimensional form, like uh, giving it, emphasizing you know, the real reality, um, like much of like the Renaissance painters did. So that's that's sort of, it's, 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 I would say that they both sort of, both acrylic and oil have, um, they're very difficult to work with. I don't think, when people ask me, oh, what do you prefer? Um, I don't, I really have a preference. I kind of like both, both to be, quite candid um because they all they sort of yield different results but when i when i did make the transition from oil to acrylic i noticed that it was it was a uh, very challenging to um to to um what is that called to not dilute but uh i don't know if that's the right word but um to create more create uh have more have less pigment and more oil, more binder if that makes sense more binder um so that i was i was able to layer it to to um to create to blend in uh the values thoroughly so i i i forgot exactly what gac i used i think it was a gac 100 um, to and, and so at the time I was just using black and white uh, paint um, and I was um, I was noticing that you could you could see the the pieces of um, of pigment of acrylic pigment uh, while while I was mixing it with the uh, GAC one hundred I think it was I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. There's like one, 100, 200, 300. So there's just different things out there. But and it was it was a painstaking, really, um, really, really challenging to 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 paint with acrylic paint in that in that in that way in that method. But but so now now um I use acrylic paint in a different way. I more like of a like an impasto sort of so I try to I don't really uh attempt to create like um actual texture but I I think I do need it um just because I it gives it um another dimension and I kinda like that a lot. I think I'm gonna go over my red again because it just feels a little transparent and I kinda want it to be more opaque. It will also help probably to not add too much water to it, but is that that I guess that is the binder that kind of breaks it, breaks the acrylic. Um, great. Okay, so I have my I have my cool colors so far. My uh, so my analysis. Yellow, cool, a uh, warm colors. I'm sorry, yellow, yellow, orange, orange, and red, orange. And you'll notice that the orange and the red orange looks uh, very similar to each other. So I can either maybe add more red to it, to the to the red orange. And the good thing about acrylic, I, in my opinion, is that you can layer it, and you can um kind of um. You can, you can sort of obstruct the pigment that's underneath without affecting the the, the the one that you layer on top. I think it also depends on the amount of coats that you add. 
um, too. But the thing about oil is that the light can see through the different layers of, of the of the paint. Um, if we're catching it through within the layers, but um, I forgot what that's script the term that they use for it. I don't remember now. I don't recall. Um, it's not wet on wet. It's um oh what was it? I don't remember now. I can't remember. All righty. So we'll do the we'll mix the violet back in next. We'll try to get really nice good um, amount of okay, not shipping up. You also want to have your brushes clean. You want to clean your brushes before you mix any paint, or you might just have each a brush for each each one. So it just depends on. And you just want to make sure your brushes are clean, your tools are always clean. I think I just didn't add enough red. So let me go back in there. Oh no, wait, wrong. Uh, No. So so before I even started to paint, for example, I would mix my colors for like an hour when I was using oil because they take a long time to dry. So I would just mix my colors for an hour first. And, and I think that's just partly due to the fact that my teacher emphasized that I pay attention to the to colors and to making sure that um, I mix the colors before I started to paint so that when I did, when I did finally start to paint, I had all my colors and I didn't have to stop to mix the colors. And then if I didn't have enough, um, I had to, again, mix the color. You don't want to mix the color, you know, multiple times while you're painting because then you probably, because the color is very, to get the exact same color is, is very challenging, you know. But, um, but once you get the hang of it, it just becomes something that is, that, um, Brings a lot of joy because it takes a lot of, of skill to kind of oh see that's too too blue maybe even a blue violet I'm just gonna have it yeah it's too blue oops I think I added too much you could also darken blue with um with the with analogous colors like if you want to darken the blue you would use violet. Or through its complement as well, sometimes. Yeah, especially like if you want to darken a yellow, you can use violet. If you want to lighten a yellow, uh, a violet, you can use yellow. If you want to darken a violet, darken a violet, if you want to make your violet darker, um, even darker, I mean, that's kind of impossible. Violet is a very dark color already, which is why I used it as my the darkest uh, value in while well, painting whatever I did. Um, as your shadows, I guess, yeah, you can use violet for your shadows because, so, if you can see here, I don't know if anybody, you guys can tell here in my other color spectrum, but I have here, the violet is right here. You see how dark it is? And so is the alizarin crimson. It's very dark when you mix it with violet. I would say that that's the darkest. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's down here. It's really dark. Yes, we could see that, okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can see that violet is very, very, very dark uh, color. So oftentimes I will use violet for um, the darkest value. And if I wanted to lighten my, val my violet, I would uh, either use yellow or just depends on where the light is coming from and what's hitting it. Often, too, is um, when people do start to paint, they, they layer a wash. I want to say it's a, a wash. A wash, I think that's what they, they call it. So that um, they can perceive the colors better when they're adding it to the canvas. Or grisel, grisel. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. But um, I know that, for example, like 
a lot of painters would work in black and white and then they would layer the final coat would be whatever color they were they were just trying to achieve um like if it was a flesh i guess they would use like a final coat cover all the black and white values with whatever color but um I think I, I added too much blue. So let's see if I can add more. Okay, there we go. It's interesting when you're mixing the colors because they change. And it's really, they change before your eyes. And it's really interesting to see it. But you know, I'm noticing that this part of it is looking more like blue. So let's see if we can change out. Okay, you can kind of see it a little bit. But I'll just let it dry and then go over it. The value is going to be really well. I guess it's a little light. Yeah, it's good. Um, I can, I can, okay, I'm going to take this violet and then I'm going to add it to the red. It looks like maroon a little bit. Let's see what it looks. So uh, mixing color is, is challenging, I like to say these, um, but that's okay. You can, you can definitely. Um, that's a really pretty color. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. How's everyone doing with their color wheel? Is everyone? Yep. Good? Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that. um, do, do you, does anybody have a favorite color? that they used in their work or, I don't know. I don't know. I use a lot of black and white. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 I like black and white too, actually. I just did value studies with um, tinting and toning and shading, which were really fun. Oh, gosh. Um, Especially with the the shading when you when you get a color that's so yellow but it's so black at the same time. Oh wow, interesting! Wow. I think I think shadows with yellow and black would be really cool too. Yeah. Like on your your grid. Uh huh. If you did that with the yellow starting with the yellow rather than a white or red. Right, right. Using that, do that with the yellow. That would be cool. Yeah. I don't have my book with me, but um, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, another artist said she basically filled an entire sketchbook doing value studies, just three different values, plus the primary color, pure and purely. Um, and she did stencils and or just plain color. But then you rip them up and you try to get them balanced. But um, it, it's it's. She said basically she did every single color <laughs> because she said you have to be able to do every single color, or you know you haven't like you don't really know. Hmm. what it'll look like yeah where, where did you do that um that's that what was like a tones study you said where did you do um that? it's sketchbook revival karen abend okay. um she she's she did a sketchbook revival like live sessions last year but then she recorded seven of the best speakers and then they um she's posted them so if people go to look up sketchbook revival on um online then in, on youtube you can find this you know and 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 sort of sign up or register she can, she'll send you a link with the seven and sort of like the second or third one in is all the value studies it's really cool they're they're really interesting artists talking about very different you know color as form or form and color and how it changes things and yeah so interesting Zeb, is there a way that we can see the classes that that you teach? You said you teach, you taught where? So I currently teach at um, FIU. I teach a I teach a beginning drawing class and an intermediate class, and then I also teach a figure drawing class. It's uh, intermediate and a beginner. But then uh, at um, Miami Dade College, I teach uh, in uh, I teach uh, art appreciation. Uh, so no color, no color theory and color mixing classes that we could audit or not, not right now, not right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I did a two-dimensional visual organization class, 
And that's where I learned, like thoroughly really learned about the color wheel and things like that, um, organic, like color theory. Um, okay. That was a small, that was color with that, at that time they broke uh, color into different projects. Um, they, uh, how did I, say, if I remember correctly, we, I was able to teach color both um, as a, like what, like the theory of it, but also to the application of it through different ways because color is used in different ways, like um, as a way to express emotions, but also to more um, objective thought. Like in a, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. It was interesting. Um, so. All right, thank you. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Um, So we have about 15 minutes left okay. for questions and comments. I don't know, Zeb, are you going to finish your color? Oh, yeah, you'll finish. Look at you. I'm going to do, I'm going to make green now, see if I can um, at least get the green. But, um, there's a very zen, calming quality to just, even just sitting here and watching you paint. <laughs> I'm enjoying it on my end over here. <laughs> you could yes, also- It's been very nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, you can also use color pencils too. Lately, I've been using a lot of color pencil in my work and um, drawing. I've been drawing a lot with color pencil. And I, I really love um, color pencil as in, in a, in a different way to um, interact with color. So it's a lot of fun um, because I'm thinking more about color more as like a, uh, expressing a mood. Um, and, and it really, it's really interesting to sort of see the kind of um, way it sort of shifts your understanding of like something in there that you're just sort of working on. Um, so, I try to um, use um, color as a way to express like red, for example, like the ideas of uh, um, not alert, like being alert or things of that, like that. Or, um, or I think a good example would probably be like Vincent Van Gogh is one example. Um, there's also, um, first art with the artists that I, I think Sort of do the same thing, um, or um, George O'Keefe too. I look at the those two artists that are in color in a very personal way. I also find that if you if you always stick with one medium, then what do you do when you're stuck? Right. So I'm in the middle of moving house, and all I found was like a random collection of pencils. Um, and and some pens earlier before this class. So like I'm using colored pencil. <laughs> it yeah. was pretty well. Nice. Shockingly. See everyone's uh color wheel at the end. So that'll be great. Let's see um where we can shoot. You know. But um yeah, yeah, essentially um, you know, the reason why I turned to color pencil was because um I moved, I moved uh far away from my studio. So I I found color pencil to sort of uh, be really easy easy to work with at home. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like uh, acrylic paint um, where, you know, you need like a lot of space, um, make sure you don't paint on the table, you know, et cetera, make sure you don't make a mess. And so color pencil has been definitely one way to, uh, not lose my creativity of two um or you know sometimes i you know i'm sure this happens to many of us uh, like the urge to kind of create something like i have to make something um so i i, I think color pencil has been such a great tool to have around um and i you know surprisingly i went to jerry's um in 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 uh, I think it's the one in Broward. There's like I think two, if I'm not right, wrong. Um, and they didn't really have 
that much like they didn't have okay so i was looking for some colors right so i, I ended up buying like a, a set of different colors and i was like okay I, I couldn't find anything that really i really wanted to you know that fit my budget really so i just decided to just get um an assortment of colors and then a, a pack of colors so i was just like okay what you know but you, i think what i what i learned from that was that um that all color pencils are not the same, are ma not made the same way. Like some are more chalky and then the, some others are, are less so, like more, um, I think, I guess it depends on the age of the of the color pencil too, when they were made and things like that. But um, so, so you can lay your color pencil in different, it depends on the paper too. Also, um, I like to get the 300 series Strathmore paper, um, but they have the, different types of quality of paper um you just you, you know what it is you just got to make sure you do the research like online before you even get the paper because um when you get there um you know everybody works differently so everyone's gonna have different a different uh idea of how the color works on paper so i bought the three i was looking for 400 series but they didn't have that at the store so i had to go and get a 300 series strathmore paper and they, they come different in different qualities. You probably can see on the cover, some are good for uh, markers. So I got that one. I got that one and then I got the one that's like normally used for color pencil. I forgot what the cover said, but I got both because I really wanted to try experiment. And I, and I noticed that the one for markers w worked well for me. So um, that was something I noticed immediately when I was like, Green looks good. Needs another layer. But um, I I when I'm working with color now, I don't really worry about um. You know, I treat it more as like a symbol, like a, re I want to say a ready made, like uh something that's already, it's already mixed. Um, so I just rely on pre mixed colors sometimes. Um, but as long as they're like. Like if I want to convey the sky, I rely on white blue a lot. So I'm on, I forgot what blue I, I usually use for most of the time, most of the time, but um, I, I, I really try to um, just get the colors that I uh, really need. And, um, so, um, but but that was, is not the case. Um, so everyone just works in a different way. And I'm just working on my blue green. Working blue green, which looks really How's everyone's color wheel going? Good? I hope so. Yep. All right, maybe I can make a uh, yellow green now. Oh, then we also have the, uh, you know, feel free. We didn't really work on the, the color scheme much, so maybe I'll just, so maybe, um, you could probably you do this on your own and if let me know if you have any questions. Um yeah. Yeah, maybe talk about how that works because we have we have just a few minutes left. Um yeah. I'll move the spotlight here. Because we're yeah. down it's uh, six twenty two and we'll finish at six thirty. So maybe talk about how, if they were gonna fill that out, how does that work? Yeah. yeah, so essentially you have your primary colors, which are uh 
yellow, red, and blue, of course. Secondaries, you probably you all know you already know about as well. Um, have a green, a orange, and violet, so you can place those there. And then intermediate colors would be just other colors that are that I didn't mention earlier. So uh, the ones that are between the primary and the secondary colors, so yellow, orange, yellow, green, um, blue, green, violet, blue, red, violet, and then red, orange. So you have that there. Um, and then for the tertiary colors, um, that one you would have, I believe, um, that would be the, I think you can do yellow, green. Um, if I'm correct, wait, I'm getting a little bit confused now. Um, what is the difference between triadic and tertiary? Because I thought triadic, tertiary, you could pick any three that were the not ones, primary or secondary. There's a primary triadic, which would be the yellow, the it's yellow, red, and blue, which are form a triangle. And then mm -hmm. the secondary triadic system is green, uh, orange, and violet. And those are made um gray, if I'm correct. Uh, they all they sort of neutralize themselves together. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so the analogous colors would be the four. For example, you can really plug in whichever four you would like that are on the color wheel. They have to be all next to each other. Um, so you can do, for example, yellow, yellow, green, green, and blue, green. Um, then the triadic color you, here is on the little diagram. It just shows the, um, the primary, but you can do the secondary ones and then you could also do the tertiary triadic colors so that would be you could plug in maybe um yellow orange basically it's just the ones that form a triangle so you can do yellow orange a red violet and blue green that can that's one way to fill in the triadic colors scheme for that area or you can go you can do the primary colors um because those are also triadic colors it's just basically the three colors that make a form a triangle in the color wheel. Oh, so I um, see. So like you could start at yellow. It's like it's they're on the color wheel. They're they're separate by four. So if you start at yellow, orange, and you count four to the left, one, two, three, four. It's red, violet, and then one, two, three, four. It's blue, green. So that would be the 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 tri triad or the triangle. Yeah, that would be the yeah the triad triangle. Um, that's a would be a good way to. Start I got it. So then, if I start at green, I go one, two, three, four. It's green, orange, and one, two, three, four, violet. One, two, three. Yeah. So green, orange, and violet is another one. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's okay. I got it. That would be a secondary triadic colors. There you Those go. Are said. Colors. <laughs> <laughs> um, I understand it, but I but I get it. <laughs> let me see what I have here. Yeah. I mean, I I just okay. I had a colors result from mixing the neighboring primary and secondary. Colors. So that is your tertiary colors. Someone had a question about that. So I just. Um, Can you say that again? There were artists that when the color theory came to be, like when it was developed, uh, I guess in the early 19th century, there were artists that specifically used the color wheel to create paintings. They used I'm, you know, like they use the tertiaries and the triads and the blah, blah, blah. Um, uh -huh. um, then that I'm thinking of, of oh, well, we're almost, we're almost done with our E. Sorry, what did you say that the tertiary definition was just a second ago? It was mixing what? Seven? We're mixing the neighboring primary and secondary colors. Thank you. Oh, um, and, um, Okay, so um, yeah, here the triadic color schemes use three hues that are equidistant from one another on the color wheel. 
three hues that are equidistant, such as red, yellow, and blue. So they have to be equidistant from the three hues that are equidistant from each other. So it's it's not the analogous colors. Um, I guess it would be like you said, like four, the fourth one. Um, that's a good way to. <laughs> See if I missed them. Okay, here's here's the color scheme to have a better um, idea. So uh, so okay, so here you'll need black and white and gray to um add the tint and shade and tone and neutral. So the, to get the neutral for blue, I added orange. So that's the complement. Okay. And um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, I mean, it's just, it, color is very challenging and I feel like I have to make sure that um, I double check because otherwise I'll probably just... <laughs> Well, um, I, I just put in the chat a link to uh, Daily Art Magazine um, with William William Turner's painting. Um, he is one that really used color theory. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh was another one using it to determine, you know, what colors to use specifically. Um, so the link is in there and. Uh, it's it's almost six thirty, so we'll have to let me turn off the spotlight. We'll have to say good night. Um, thank you, Zeb, for for sharing all of this with us and sharing your time. I am I do appreciate you doing this, putting all of this together and working us through it. It's it's very it's very generous of you. Thank you, uh, Jean, for having creating the space uh, where I can join and. Uh, thank you, everyone else, um, for uh, just you know being able to kind of come in and also um, help and um, yeah learn along us. Um, okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you again. Um, we hope to see you again for something else soon. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I want to come visit you guys. We're close yes. by. Yes, come visit. Come visit. We're always here. <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll try to come to your next open house. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. Thank Bye everybody. You Thank you. Here. I appreciate you showing up. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Let's pause. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night.